these works are, are on aluminum and, and they're um, uh, new for me because they're, they're smaller and um, a lot of the other works that I've been working on uh, sort of fit in, in, into the theme of, um, of understanding the world through this tension between utopian and dystopian kind of uh, uh, aspirations about what kind of, what kind of society that we, we want or don't want. And with the smaller works, what I'm trying to do is create a sort of a single symbol for that. And with these, these palm trees, for me, a palm tree is a, is a symbol of, of paradise or utopia, the, uh, the, the commercials where you, you know, you, you've got this, the, the beach vacations, that kind of thing. Um, but what I, what I was interested in with these was, was the sort of that symbol under, under duress or under distress uh, in high winds. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of connecting it to climate change or unpredictable weather or, or in, in general, the, the sort of fragility of this symbol. And uh, I chose aluminum because I, it's, it's, it's very almost mirror-like and I wanted these paintings to be really, really active. And uh, I, think, I think having that reflective surface underneath uh, adds to the sense of motion and sense of uh, energy. Um, these are very quick paintings. Uh, they're, uh, they're loosely based on a video, YouTube video of, uh, of a palm tree in, uh, uh, during uh, Hurricane Irma last uh, summer. Um, someone was filming it in their backyard and, I, and I, was, I was really interested in how the tree took on a different sort of character and was almost dancing. Uh, so I, I based each of these on, on, uh, on sort of a, a certain attitude that the, uh, that the tree was having. And I was, I was thinking of them, of hanging them all in, in a series so you get a, this sort of cinematic sense of motion. Uh, and the aluminum is very uh, uh, it's a kind of exciting to paint on, um, so uh, it, it really shows all the all the brush marks, and it's very immediate. And and uh, the paint does sort of unpredictable things, so there's a certain unpredictable under unpredictableness <laughs> in, in in these paintings. And uh, we could go over over here on the subject of of materials. Uh, these are also sort of single symbols that that they don't have a larger narrative structure. They they are they're basically a, a single image of uh, condos and buildings that I, I, I based on photographs I took in Vancouver uh, at night, and I imagined that the they're, they're, these are called water line. I imagine that that they were the the, uh, the water levels in the future have risen and and so they're sort of overtaking these buildings but people are still living in them so it's sort of this imagined future where where the world is different but but life goes on and um, I did these on steel because uh, steel for me is uh, recalls the building materials of the buildings themselves so uh, it, they have they have a a, a sol very solid presence in the room. They, they feel um, uh, monumental in a way, even though they're very small scale. Um, and this is on aluminum, and I decided to, to start working more with the, with the paint as material, so I made rust in my studio and I, uh, as, as a pigment, and I started, I started um, adding rust to the paint to uh, to, um, to re and, salt, and sea salt, so I'm, I'm, I was sort of working with, with these, these kind of industrial uh, materials, the, the, uh, the ocean coming in and, and, and interacting with, with the metal of the, of, of, of the, of the structure. But I was, I was, so I'm sort of combining the, the, the metal surface. I, sc I scratched into it, I, I, was, I, was, I was very uh, abusive towards the, the uh, towards the surface to, to sort of recall again again a sense of energy or urgency with these uh, tondos 
the opportunity to paint on a circle came up because uh, open space uh, was giving away these tables that were uh, made for the uh, Anna Banana retrospective. So these, these had a former life as Anna Banana tables and then, and then they offered them uh, if anyone wanted them and I wanted them. And just, just because the circle became available and that then the availability of the circle gave me the idea of an island as a single symbol of utopia. And um, the original word utopia was invented by Thomas More, coined by Thomas More in, uh, in the 16th century. And his book is about uh, a mythical island, that, uh, which w was his version of utopia. And, uh, and the word utopia is, was a pun at the time. It, it, it means a good place, but it also means no place. So he's, he was sort of setting up this idea of the, the, the impossibility of this paradise. The people, people, we want a perfect society, we want to be perfect, uh, but it's sort of a, it's, 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 it's an unattainable, unattainable goal. So I, I decided I would paint this island on a circle. Uh, it felt to me like, like a very appropriate shape, as if you're looking at it through a telescope or looking at it through the porthole of a ship. Um, and you're sort of approaching it, or you're you're uh, you're you're moving away from it. There's something not real about it. Um, and then I got the idea of that I would sort of recreate the island, but instead of creating the illusion, uh, uh, illusionistic, um, um, uh, the illusion of an island, I would create it out of very real materials. So I used uh, uh, broken wine bottles. So I had three different colors, three or four different colors of green wine bottles, and I and I put the goggles on and I and I smashed them with a hammer, and then I sort of had this as my model, and I sort of recreated that, but painting with a hammer. So if I wanted a, a, a smaller piece of glass, I would hit it with the hammer. I sort of lay transparent layers the way I did with this painting uh, in a more subtle way, um, I, I, I felt like I was painting with the glass rather than, than, um, than just, just, just gluing stuff on. There was, there was an actual um, layering process. And, uh, I, and, and then I, I, I painted it completely transparent, so white underneath with just transparent paint because I wanted to sort of emphasize this idea of illusion, like what's, what's real. Uh, I, uh, um, in, in some ways, this, this is more real because it's the illusion of a real island, but in, in the opposite sense, this is more real because it's, 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 it's a real physical object. It's emphasizing the physicality of, of the materials. As far as the, uh, the, the larger narrative work, I'm continuing with the idea of, of um, engaging with very rich visual culture. And uh, some of these paintings came out of uh, my trip to, uh, uh, recent trip to Mexico City in uh, end of August, beginning of September, which was, I found very surreal, very strange experience. Uh, the, the colors were so bright. The, uh, they were, they were very, very, uh, it was very visually stimulating. And so a lot of the, uh, my very dark painting started to brighten up. So I've got balloons and I've got, it's, it's a brighter palette. But as far as materials, I'm still, uh, I'm working with very, very traditional um, techniques, but non-traditional subject matter. So this is uh, uh, handmade from birch. Um, the gesso underneath is, is a traditional gesso, so it's made from rabbit skin glue, calcium carbonate, uh, titanium white powder. It's the same materials that Jan van Eyck, the very, you know, one of the very first oil painters, would have used. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm using very, very limited palette, very simple. I, 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 I make I, I, I make some of the, my paint as well, so it's, it's all kind of natural materials and very, very, very traditional uh, approach. 
very layered approach. Um, and I think, I think the, uh, the absorbency of the ground is, is very different from the, from the metal surfaces. So uh, there, there's, 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 a, there's a very different feel to these paintings. And finally, um, these works over here, both this one and this one are, are on canvas, which again has a different, a, a, for me, a different feel. Uh, the, the, the paint sort of sits on the surface. I can use the weave of the canvas. Uh, it's, it's uh, I feel like I'm imitating my process of painting on wood when I, when I come go to the canvas. I'm sort of forcing the, the work uh, or pushing it in a direction where, where it has some of the same qualities that the wood has that it wouldn't normally have. But it's, uh, the paintings tend to be very bright and, uh, and uh, very textured. Um, this, this was also influenced by, by Mexico City, the kind of brightness of it. And, and, and the painting over the, the desk over here is also uh, influenced by the, the Mexico City kind of light and, and, the, uh, and the surrounding areas.